I'm going to um, ask you a question tonight. I, actually, I've had several people email me, message me, and say things to me like, well, God can't use me. God can't use me. And then they would go into this reason. Well, we're going to take a look tonight at some people that God used. I'd like you to turn with me to Judges. I'm going to begin there in chapter 10. These are people that God used. I'm going to begin in verse 6. And the, and the reason I'm going to begin in verse 6, there's something here that shows us something about God that's pretty interesting. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and, for, and served him not. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is Gideon, Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon pressed over, passed over Jordan to fight against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of the Lord cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and the Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Maonans did oppress you? And you cried unto me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Do you see that? I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And look at what the Lord did. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and the princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he? that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon, and he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Chapter 11, verse 1. Now Jephthah, the Gideonite, was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot. He was the son of a harlot. <laughs> he was the son of a prostitute. He was the son of a whore. Look the word up. If you don't understand what that means, ask your dad. But he also was illegitimate. This was an illegitimate man. Illegitimate. This is what God used. It says, and, and he, was a, he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there they gathered vain men into Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not you hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you come unto me now when you are in distress? They kicked him out once. They kicked him out. Now they want his help. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. 
Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them, and Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the kings of the children of Ammon. And it, let's go down to verse, uh, let's go to verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of, Gil of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And if you go down to verse 32, then Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. God used a bastard. God used the son of a prostitute. You think God can use you? Let's go to the next one, one that we're all kind of familiar with, Joshua chapter 2. This woman ministered to me. Chapter 2, verse 1, and Joshua... The son of Nen sent out Shatom, two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. They hung out in a prostitute's house. A prostitute. And it, <laughs> and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men, and hither to night the children of Israel to search out the country. Notice, says, verse 2 again, and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they are come out to search all the country. And the woman, the prostitute, took the two men, hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I was not once they were. And it shall come to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark that the men went out. Whether the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. Not only was this woman a prostitute, a harlot, a whore, she lied. She lied. <laughs> she lied to the king. She lied to the king. I remember when Dole ministered this the first time, my jaw dropped. You know what? We don't know God. We don't know God. You know, I've heard people say, well... They used the term harlot, but she really wasn't a harlot. Really? You know, Hebrews 11, the roll call of faith says, the harlot Rahab. So Hebrews called her a harlot. So yes. I, I, let me guess. You're the same people that said that Jesus drank grape juice. And that, that they called him a wine bibber because of all the grape juice he drank. Right? Look, we have got to humble ourselves and we have to receive the engrafted word the way it is written. You cannot change the word of God to fit your heart. The word of God is the word of God and we have to receive it as such. So, the prostitute lied. All right, now let's see what happened. It says, And the men pursued after them the way to, J to Jordan under the fords, and as soon as they were pursued after them, they were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up to them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did we remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God 
He is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our lives for yours. If, we utter not, if you utter not this, our business. And it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Did you see what she was getting out of this? 15. And then she let them down by a cord through the window from her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountains, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterwards you may go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou hast let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brethren, and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his own head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will quite of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. Now turn to Joshua 6, verse 20. Look what happened to this prostitute, this whore that lied to the king. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout. We talked about this this last week, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man, woman, young and old, and ox, and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua, Joshua, said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she has, as you swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. You know how many people she saved? It's in Hebrews 11. Eighty. Eighty family members she got in that room. And God saved them. God saved the family. God used a harlot. You think he can use you? Now, let's go to another one. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, chapter 10. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him Jesus, his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave his disciples power against unclean spirits to cast them out. He gave these disciples power to cast out devils. To heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the name of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter. Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee. John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. And Thomas. And Matthew, the publican. Matthew, the publican. Do you know what a publican was back in that time? The publican was low class. The publican was the scum of the earth. The publican is what my grandparents called white trash. That's what Matthew was. You don't believe me? Turn to Matthew 21, verse 28. This is Jesus speaking. Verse 28. But what think you? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. And he came to the second one and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether the twain did the will of his father. And then they said unto him the first. And Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots, the low class, the publicans and the harlots, go into the kingdom of God before you. 
You know, at this point, it's not so bad when they call you a whore. It's not so bad when you get the emails calling you an adulteress. It's not so bad. You know what? This is good company. This is good company. Let's go back to chapter 10. Or Matthew, or Matthew, Matthew the publican. Matthew the publican. These were considered the scum of the earth. Now, guess who wrote the book of Matthew? Guess who cast out demons? Guess who healed the sick? Guess who preached the gospel? That nasty little publican. You think God can use you? Now, let's go finish. I'm going to finish in Romans 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, they are all under sin as it is written. I have to say this, back in the day of Frisco, these were some of my favorite, most comforting verses right here. Amen. My favorite comforting verses. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. You know what? That put me on an even plane with everybody else. It says they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. Do you see that word all? Do you see that word all? There is none righteous. No, not one. That's the word of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. It says they're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used to seat the poison of aspis under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift, swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. All the world guilty before God. Amen. All of it. That's all of us. That's the harlots. That's the whores. That's the bastards. That's the kings. That's the presidents. That's the ladies' mission society. All right. <laughs> Every tongue may be stopped. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. You know what flesh includes? Your flesh by the law cannot be justified. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. It doesn't matter how pretty you are. It doesn't matter what job your parents had. It doesn't matter what your heritage is. It doesn't matter your skin color at all. Do you hear what this says? There is none righteous, no, not one. Not one bit of your flesh will count. You know, I was kind of like Doyle. I thought God could use my personality. You know what? He couldn't. He destroyed it. He had to destroy it. Why? There is none righteous. No, not one. So God has taken anything. It doesn't matter where you are, what you've done, what you look like, who you know. None righteous. Where does our righteousness come from? Verse 21. But now. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and all upon all them that believe. Amen. That believe. You can have no righteousness but the righteousness of Jesus. You can have no righteousness, none, but what comes through the blood of Jesus, what comes through believing 
in the gospel. That's where your righteousness comes from. So he can take the dregs of society and make them perfect and his ministers, his ministers. You know what? Jesus said to the woman, the sinner, everybody in the city knew she was a sinner. And she was wiping Jesus' hair. And he said, those that are forgiven much, love much. Love much. That's who Jesus came for. That's who Jesus came for. Can God use you? All you have to do is believe that Jesus died for you, that he was buried for you, that he was raised again for you, that he forgave you of all your sin, that he took away all that he cannot use. He put it on the cross for you. And all you have to do to receive it is to call on the name of Jesus and believe he was raised from the dead and you shall be saved. And you watch God make you an ambassador of the gospel.